morning, Farming Insider. It's YouTube. Er, yeah, that sounds right. You know what is right? No. You know what's wrong? Is the fact that it is super cold right now. I make gloves. This is too much. I will be completely honest with you guys. Hey, and loading up customers and even farming becomes a heck of a lot less fun when it is 30 degrees and below. And I think right now it is right on the border of 30. It might be like 32 or something. It's just cold. Anyways, I'm done complaining. This week, today, Tuesday and Wednesday, today's Monday, in particular, are absolutely enormous. We are going to be getting the rebaler ready to go. The issue, we have about 240 large squares that we pretty much have to move to access where we're gonna rebale this year. So right now, Justin is making some room in the arena and the other machine shed, and Robbie and I are pulling hay out of the green barn, transporting it over to the barns, you know, over there, and making some room for the actual rebaler. This was not exactly the intention, but kind of the intention, but but maybe not at the same time. I knew that we were gonna have to move some of this hay because we were out of room and all the barns were kind of bursting at the seams. We moved a couple semi loads, but I quite intentionally priced this hay fairly high and I knew it probably wasn't gonna move that well because I didn't really want to sell it in large square format. I want to sell it as a rebuild product because it does make more sense and it's more profitable. And lo and behold, it's now November and we're almost out of our normal first cutting and we need to start rebaling. So this is what we're doing. We have to move it. This is what we call the junkyard, but also some of it's not junk. Anyways, this is the back end of the green barn. And as you can see, we have unveiled a portion of the Messick Bale Destroyer. We figured we needed to remove about 10 tiers and a little bit out front. So it was gonna be close to 240 bales that we have to move to get room for the rebaler, the 16 foot table out front, the inline baler, and possibly the baron behind it. The Baron is a significantly longer tool than the Arcusen. So we might start out rebaling with the Arcusen simply for real estate under roof purposes. Uh, Cause we'll have to probably actually make like an additional 20 foot if we actually want to run the Baron. And I'm not sure we're gonna have that option getting started. I have already booked quite a few semi loads of this rebale product to go out. So as soon as we get it made, we should start shuffling it out and clearing room and all that. So it won't be too long until maybe we have some space to think and enjoy ourselves again. But for the next two weeks, it's probably gonna be a little bit tight. This stuff is gorgeous. This is some stuff from the home farm. This is a nice Timothy Orchard light alfalfa mix. Baled nice and dry, baled soft. It is gonna make, I, we're hoping it rebales really well. Got my gloves on. I will go ahead and move the truck up for Rob. Diff lock on, Ooh, right there. Probably don't wanna hit that, that's not too good. One more grab of three and we will get out of here. I think the younger generation would call this something along the lines of securing the bag. The bag being a load full of really nice first cutting large squares of hay. Anyways, we are securing the bag. That will make three trailers this morning. We are getting, we're not doing anything super creative, just stacking. We're getting one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times six is 36. We're getting 36 bales on this trailer. I think we only got 24 on the goosenecks because we didn't want to overload the dovetail at the back end. So 24 and 24 is 48 plus 36, 84. Gosh, I really hope that's right. I want to impress you guys. Semi loads of large squares. They look so good. Justin is using the overhead grapple to move these. Uh, sometimes I think we actually prefer it. it, it it's kind of nice. You only grab two, not three. But it really does work pretty decent. Nice job, PJ. Ignore this at a heated bundle. We are making 
making some clear progress. We are over halfway through what we need to be through. Make some room to actually start rebaling. But this is time for an honesty hour. This is Farming Insider being real with you guys. A couple of these bales we noticed uh, are a little off color. If it wasn't directly in front of the door being bleached by the sun, off color usually means you bale it with a little bit too much moisture and it heated up. And when it heats, it essentially bakes itself. It, sometimes it gets musty, sometimes it doesn't, but it usually off colors, that's for sure. So instead of putting the ones that look a little off colored, sticking them somewhere, we're going to the root of the problem right away. So Rob is setting three on there. I'm gonna cut the middle one, which was one that looked exceptionally bad when we were pulling it out. I guess I wouldn't even say exceptionally bad. It wasn't vividly green like the other, so clearly there was something funky going on. And a lot of the times when something funky is going on, it probably wasn't just one bale. It was the entire outside round, or you even just started a pinch too early and you made, you made 25 that aren't perfect. You never really know. We don't see a lot of issues, but with these large squares, I, for one, am not super familiar with it. Uh, none of us are, are super experienced in the way of large squares. It's hard to tell what's going on the inside of the bale. Dad, if you watch this one, I know you're going to laugh because you constantly say I'm way more paranoid than I need to be. And you're right, I am. We dug into this bale right here and there is legitimately nothing wrong with it at all. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous hay throughout the entire bale. Nice color. Um, it doesn't even smell like it heated or anything. I, I don't know what the deal is. It just gave us the perception that maybe one side did. And it's, it's really nice. It's really beautiful. So, I don't know what the issue was there. But now I feel a lot better. We actually have two semis. Today's Monday. We have two semis to this rebuild stuff that's supposed to go out Friday. We're kinda, we kind of got to get going. executive decision has been made. We are pulling no more hay from the green barn. So this is the last trailer here, along with the semi filled up over there that Justin will stuff in the barn we call the arena. My it's good, pick it up. Oh. Here we are in the start of day two. We got everything cleared out. We got anxious, so we're hooking the baler up. This right here is a 90 degree gear bo gearbox that the baler will hook up to. Then we'll have a tractor that sticks outside this door, plums into that, and runs the baler. That's good. We gotta get the jack off. What did get you say? Off. Come on, get the jack off. That's good. Now, grab my boat. You don't want it dead straight. Why? Why don't you? You want the U joints to work a little. That's why. Yeah, aim for like right, yep, right Back there. Back to it, hips. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Good. Lock it. That's it. Nice job, driver. What's that? Nice job, driver. Because we are subject to the confines of the barn that we have the rebating set up in, we needed to make some custom modifications to the Baron in order for the tractor to be at a 90 degree angle and still run the machine going through the wall to the outside. So Sam and Rob came up with a game plan and it worked out really great. They had to do some custom modifications, some welds, extend some hydraulic hoses, uh, remove some zip ties and run a few new lines. And they were able to spin the PTO pump and keep the integrity of the machine completely put together. And I'm really proud of the way it turned out and how quickly and well they handled it. So we can weld it. You can't weld through paint? No, it's not recommended. It doesn't weld good. Everybody, probably use the term you had to slop them out. <laughs> right here is what we're talking about. Just a little. Slop out the holes. You ever welded before, Rob? No. First time. Look at that. The clean hoodie cleaning that off. You're not supposed to be able to see through it anyways. It's always dark when you look through it. <laughs> Just protect your eyes. That's custom though. That not is many, custom. Uh... Is that yours? Mm -hmm. Wow. When are you going to get that 180 out of here? Does it even turn on? It was split for two years. It's an antique at this point. <laughs> here, we got to get one. Alright, what settings are you going to weld this at, Rob? Hot one. Hot? Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely bump it up from before. We'll try that. You ever ran a TIG welder? Actually, uh, I like TIG welding, but I'm not that good at it. Is that good enough to show the internet, Rob? Are you proud of it? Good enough. For who it's for. Who's it for? It's for JD. me. It's really for me. for you two, yeah. It's glued together real nice. So we're hurting the resale value of this poor girl. Nobody, actually, I think we're improving it, right? I don't think we're going to have any trouble no, selling. No, we're going to keep this if we get a new one. I don't think uh, we're going to have problems selling any of this stuff. If new ones are constantly 10 grand more than the old ones. You gotta go. What's going on, baby boy? Where's my fish? Fish I is done. I was getting pizza. I have failed you guys a bit. I hope you like my wardrobe here. <laughs> I have failed you guys a bit on keeping up with this rebaler setup. But here we are pretty much with the final installment needed to get going somewhat autonomously. That's not true, just with less people than we did before. We're going to make a bunch of improvements. This will get us going. We have a lot of orders to send out. We want to get fans in here for dust control and maybe eventually some other things I'll show you guys. This, we modified the Baron. Robbie and Sam diligently worked on actually spinning the PTO pump so it can kick out, out the wall like we have with the Thrasher and the Baylor. So we'll show you that. And everything should be linear. We got the barn cleaned out. You got an idea what's going on, Sammy? Of course I do. We're getting the bale baron hooked up in well in line with our baler here, so hopefully our bales can just flow right into the baron is the idea here. Sure. And then hopefully our spacing between the wall and the baron chute is Works. there. Yeah. Rebale product. Very nice. I got distracted. That that happens a lot. Somehow we gotta get that hitch to the wall. And another thing we gotta build uh Hey, hey, hey. Really? You always have a thought about something. Come on, I, how do you I know nothing. What do you think about this? I know nothing. Why do you want to go this way for? There. Because we're going to swing this over. Later! Robbie and Sam's custom modification. They pulled the belts and chains off. That actually runs this belt and rollers. Took the rollers out. Just going to slide it on wood. I'm going to have to cut this down some. Why? You might be throwing it up too high. We want to. Why? That way, if there's a bind, the bales will start being up instead of pushing at each other. You guys push this way and I'll push that way. I'll steer. One, two, three, and go. Oh! You better call them bells. The issue now is Captain Rob didn't steer us perfect, so we got to nudge the Baron over just a pinch so it's in line with the output of the baler. Right, hold on. That will go. That will go. I think it will too. So what'd you do over here, Randy? Drilled some holes. Cut some holes. Cut, cut more holes again. In the good barn. Pretty soon I was going to take the whole side down. We did. Out west, they don't even have walls. So the. The 5710 on the Baron's gonna hook up right there. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a two tractor power system. So we'll have three running units. We'll have a loader and two tractors. So when Rob and Sam turn this PTO pump so you can stick it out the door, we shut the valve off the hydraulic reservoir. And now we just wanna bump the pump real fast to make sure we get oil into it so we don't burn it up. We bumped it twice and we're not convinced it's filling with oil. The valve is definitely on. Now that, that fan blows this way. Does it? Yeah. So it's a sucking fan. 
Is it gonna work? Yes, it's gonna work. Is it gonna work, Sammy? Of course it's gonna work. Why wouldn't it? It's the moment of truth. Getting ready here. What are you thinking here? It's gonna work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. I'm thinking about all the thought and work that went into this. Well, next year I'm sure we'll change it all again. So. It'd be an entirely different barn. Right. <laughs> all right, wrap this it up. Is the moment of truth. Robbie's custom built ramp. Yeah. Looks pretty nice. Outside we are running with two, well, two power units, two tractors. We have the Open Station Massey running the Baylor, or no, I'm, yeah, Open Station Massey running the Baylor and the Shredder, and that maxes out the hydraulic capacity. The Shredder does itself. Then we have the 5710 Cab Massey running the Baron, and then we ran extra long extension hoses to that table that feeds the Baylor, and it's running that table. Here, so they stay cool out of the dust. It's a pretty good system so far for now. In. Enjoy the ride. We are getting the bundler, the bale baron, fired up right now. The screen takes a second, no big deal. Put our switch on, we got on. PTO on, we can throttle up right now. 1000 RPM, 1000 PTO. You excited? I like rebailing. Ready for a big day? Of course. Here we go. This is the Baron control box. You can set it on remote from the tractor or local to be controlled here. We're going to have it on local. The guy shocked all the wheels together, bungee them so they shouldn't move. That's a great idea. Slow start. Hold out. Yeah. 